Good morning, dear friends. What a joy it is to come together again at the feet of Jesus. This is a brand new day and before we begin our day's activities and life, let us sit at the feet of Jesus just for a few minutes and listen to what he has to speak to us today. And today's lesson is taken from the book of Judges, chapter 16, particularly verse 20. And uh, meditation has to do with the spiritual unconsciousness. And uh, there are many things we do unconsciously, and there is nothing wrong in it. But when the unconsciousness has to do with the spiritual realm, we need to be extremely careful. Samson was unconscious of his spiritual loss. But on the other hand, Moses was unconscious of his spiritual gain. And uh, Samson's case was tragic. But Moses' case was triumphant and blessed. Samson's case was fatal to service. But Moses' case was um, a triumphant and a blessed one for the service of God. And there was an increase in Moses' case in the service of God. Though he was unconscious of that gain that he was gaining in the presence of the Lord. And so first let us consider Samson's case today. Unconscious his case was very tragic in the sense that um, he was, uh, when we consider Samson's uh, case, his case was unconscious of a spiritual decline. He was very unconscious of it. He was not aware of the fact that spiritually and his uh, touch of God upon his life was just declining and slowly leaving him. One of the saddest sentences in the Bible is found in Judges chapter 16, verse 20, where we read these words. Then she called out, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He awoke from his sleep and thought, I will go out as before and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had left him. What can be sadder than this? Samson did not know that the Lord had left him. And the Spirit of God has left him. Let me give you a little background to it. Now, the Israelites were under the bondage of Philistines, and Philistines were troubling them and uh, destroying them. And so, time to time, God raised up some leaders whom we call judges. At this time, God raised Samson to be the deliverer and protector of the people of Israel. And single-handedly, he didn't have an army, he didn't have even an assistant to be with him, but single-handedly, he kept on delivering the people of Israel from the hand of the Philistines. And so many times the Philistines tried their best to capture him and kill him, but somehow they couldn't because Samson always escaped. And... Uh, but there came an occasion uh, when, uh, then when Samson fell in love with, with, a, with, a, with a lady by the name of Delilah. And so the leaders of the Philistines came to her and uh, requested her to uh, lure uh, Samson to tell you the secret of his physical power. And so Delilah started off, you know, the, the nagging and the prodding uh, Samson. Three times he told her something which was not true. And she did it, believing that could be true. 
but uh, when uh, she cried out, Samson, the Philistines are upon you, he just broke away from whatever was binding him or capturing him. He just left and they couldn't do anything. And at the end, the Laila, as usual, you know, when you are trapped by a, a, a greedy, lustful woman, this is what happened. And she prodded and she nagged and she cried and cried and uh, you say you love me but you don't love me. And then Samson got so tired unto death. That's what the Bible says. So in her lap, he lay down and told her everything, all the secret. See, the, the, the whole hair of Samson was tied in a seven braid. And he told her that is the secret of his strength. It was a sign of a Nazareth. He was to be, he was brought up as a Nazareth and uh, God told them uh, that the, his hair should never be cut. But uh, he told the secret to this lady and uh, that that time she she cut her his his braids of hair and and she was he was sleeping in her lap and then suddenly the philistines came she called out to the philistines you come this time you will catch him because he told me everything and so that is the background of this and as usual she cried out samson the philistines are upon you and he thought, as usual, I will get up and I will shake myself and I will do what I did always. And he tried. He got up. He shook himself. But nothing happened. He became so weak and they captured him. That is the background to this. And my friends, let us now try to understand the, the Samson's case. The Lord has departed from him. There were great possibilities for Samson, yet they were never fully realized. It is an awful thing to hinder God's plan and purposes for your life. My friends, if you are sure of God's plan for you, and in case if you do not know, still you can find out by reading God's word and meditating and with prayer, God can show you what his plan for you is. And once you know God's plan and purpose for your life, it is a dangerous thing for you to hinder God's plan for your life. So make sure that you protect God's plan and live God's plan for you so that you may be victorious at the end. God did not leave uh, Samson suddenly or immediately. God suffered with him long and gave him deliverances upon deliverances. It happens to us too. While we are sinning or backsliding, God still shows his mercy and continue to give us his protection, his provision, and he feeds us and he heals us. Uh, many miracles can still happen though we are backsliding or we are sinning against God. Suddenly, the judgment may not come. And we can even experience a deliverance for others. We pray and God will answer. And uh, he will provide us, us our needs and protect us. But we keep on taking things for granted. If we keep on taking God for granted, that we, are, we think uh, judgment is not falling upon us immediately, so we have this tendency to think uh, perhaps I am still in God's good book. My friends, you are wrong. You will discover it. But one day suddenly, 
you are going to discover that the Lord is no longer with you. And that day will be the gloomiest and the most terrible day in your life. He has departed from you and you have lost everything. How did, how did it happen with Solomon? How did he lose, lose everything suddenly? Life gets so busy and fast. Samson gave himself to fits of uh, uh, temper and uh, to lust. I, I, and in this condition, the strongest man had no control over himself. What a tragedy that is. Remember, Samson lost it all in the lap of a woman. The God-given gift of a supernatural power and supernatural life. And God's destiny for him, it's all lost. What a tragedy Sandy discovered. You know what it means? It means you are powerless to do any service for God. You become useless. And it means one can get so hardened by the deceitfulness of sin that we are not as sensitive as before. And my friends, for this condition, there is no excuse for us. You know why? See, in Samson's case, the Holy Spirit came upon him periodically just to accomplish one time, one one purpose of God, one supernatural manifestation, and then the Holy Spirit departs once that is done. And next time when an opportunity comes, when it was necessary for God to deliver the people, suddenly the Holy Spirit will come upon Samson, and he will begin to sense and feel that physical strength surging through his uh, muscles and he, be, he, be, he begin to feel as if he was a superman. And then suddenly he will accomplish something seemed to be very impossible. And it is done without any effort on his side. And then the Spirit of God moves away. But you know why we have no excuse? We have better things. The Holy Spirit came upon the church and inside the church on the day of Pentecost and he never departed from us. The Holy Spirit is in the church and with the church always. And we have his guidance. And this Holy Spirit is an empowering spirit. And the Holy Spirit came to stay in us and with us, to lead us. And then the grace of God is upon us. And in Titus chapter 2 it says, The grace of God that appears for our salvation is now upon us, enabling us. So this grace of God is not only a saving grace, it is also a keeping and protecting grace and it is also an enabling grace. Enabling us to do what? Enabling us to say no to ungodliness. Enabling us to say no to any temptation. Enabling us to say no to ungodly ways. And giving us a direction for our lives. But that is the yeah. Enabling us to say no to any temptation. And remember, my friends, we should never forget what we are destined for. We have not only the Holy Spirit, 
but we have the word of God. Word of God is what? It is the sword of the spirit. And here it is, the grace of God enabling us to overcome temptation. And the Holy Spirit brings into our remembrance the word of God. And we pick up the sword of the spirit to destroy the enemy of our soul. And my friends, we should never forget why we should be faithful to God and remain loyal to God and His ways and fulfill His plans and purposes for our lives. Why? Because never forget what we are destined for. And I would like to read this passage in Romans chapter 8. Verse 29, and then we shall close for today. Romans chapter 8. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. You see, that is your destiny. Your destiny is not just to be in heaven, to have eternal life there. And uh, that is not the, the ultimate goal, the destiny. The ultimate goal of God, the purpose of God for your life and my life is not only to be in heaven and enjoy eternal life. No, but to, it is His purpose purpose for us to be transformed into the likeness of God's Son, Jesus Christ himself. We shall be like him. That is, his, that is our destination. Never forget that. You should not forget your destination. Where, where are you heading for? And my friends, I pray that you will be blessed with a mighty decision this morning. That at any cost, we will not hinder God's plan and purpose for my life. Be stern and firm in that determination and remain true to the Lord until the last day of our lives here on earth. Whether it is by death or the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is very soon. And I pray, O oh Lord my God, that my listeners today shall take a new step, a glorious step towards you and to become like you at the end. And we shall protect your calling upon our lives and your purpose for us. And we shall not allow anything to come and rob us of that destiny. Thank you. And we bless your holy name. Blessed Holy Spirit, come and fill us all. Empowering us, enabling us to be true to the Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. And my friend, this is a great day. Enjoy the rest of the day and live for him. Amen.